Hello and welcome to another video on uh, Llama Index's YouTube channel. My name is Saurabh and uh, today we'll be talking about SEC Insights. We'll be doing an end-to-end -end guide covering everything from the high-level product features, system architecture, uh, doing a walkthrough of how you set up your development environment uh, locally, and also if you stick till the very end, we'll be going over how you can incorporate custom documents into this application so you can take it beyond just the SEC 10K and 10Q document use case that it comes with. Um, so like, yeah, so start off at a high level. Uh, what is SEC Insights? It's a chat application that answers questions about SEC 10K and 10Q documents. Um, very similar in ter in some, some ways to things like ChatGPT, but uh, here really the, the focus is on using Field log to generation to give you accurate answers based on uh, source of truth data from these documents. Um, that's what the application does, but really, like the reason that we wanted to open source it was that we wanted to have our developers, um, we, wanted, we wanted to give our developers a production ready full stack uh, repo that they could fork or use as a reference for their own RAG applications so that they can know what are some techniques of, uh, that, are, that are out there right today that might be relevant uh, when it comes to implementing various features that might be broadly applicable to many RAG applications. Um, and also uh, have having that repo available publicly allows you to uh, fork it into your own uh, GitHub account and start your RAG applications off with that code base so that uh, you can start off with a lot of the nice development features and product features that come with uh, the SCC Insights code base. Um, and you can try it out now with the site should be live at sccinsights.ai. Um, so we'll be doing a quick, uh, we'll be starting off by doing a quick product run through and going through how the application works just uh, kind of at the UI level. And I'll be going through each of these features as we, uh, as we go through this application. So here I have the website loaded up, sccinsights.ai. Um, we can see we're, the first thing we really have to do is uh, pick the pick the documents that we're going to be uh, incorporating into the chat page that we'll be going to next. Uh, we can pick a few companies from this for, for this form. So I'll be choosing a few like uh, let's do Apple for 2022, and let's say we compare that against uh, Amazon for 2022. Let's try to keep it simple here. Um, so about 2022 for two different companies for their 10K forms. So that's for their uh, the whole year uh, financial information. Uh, so here you can see we're like kind of greeted with uh, a chat experience window. Uh, and this is really like the core experience so that we're going to be uh, providing this experience where you can do a question and answer chat uh, with, a, with our chat engine, uh, which behind the scenes is going to be doing using a lot of the Llama index modules for the review of log generation. Um, and you'll see, you can maybe suss out in a bit, like which exact modules are, are being used behind the scenes here, or you can go into the code base and take a look for yourself. Um, let me uh, quickly go through the PDF viewer here as well. Like, uh, so here we just have a whole drop down list where you can sw swap between the two. And you can see in a bit that we actually incorporate this into the chat experience on the left hand page, left hand, uh, chat window as well. Um, so let's try to just ask uh, one of these suggested questions. What are the main business focus areas? Um, one of the things that uh, we put a lot of um, emphasis on was in providing these intermediate um, intermediate sub questions that, that we're asking uh, to come up with the answer for the top level question that the users asked. So you can see uh, the question I'm asking is really it really applies to both both companies here. And as such, our query engine breaks it down to ask the same question for each of the each of the companies that are loaded loaded into the chat. So what are the focus areas for Apple and what are the focus areas for Microsoft? We get an answer for each. Uh, and then you can see the individual answers that we received for those two sub questions. And we can also click into uh, click into these citations that it gives us to see where it's actually pulling this for information from. So you can see, like, you know, appropriately, it's pulling up some of this information from the sections on the products of Apple or the company's background. 
and similarly for Microsoft as well, and it uses that information to synthesize a response about what the main business focus areas are for each company. And as you could see, uh, it also streamed the response back at a per token level. Um, we can also ask a more uh, quantitative question, and uh, you'll see um, kind of the behind the scenes we, how, how that works as well. So we can ask something like, what was the revenue for Apple and uh, Microsoft? Um, so similarly, we're going to be asking a few sub-questions here uh, in a bit. Um, but the difference here is that uh, we actually are routing these questions differently. So instead of using sort of typical semantic search um, to search through these documents, we found that it was actually a lot nicer to actually integrate with external APIs to get some data, some of the quantitative data that might be asked from these from these chat experiences. Um, so things like revenue, the question about revenue or profits, etc., those get routed to another query, so subquery engine, which actually um, actually then pulls that information from directly from a uh, API provider, Polygon.io, which will give us a lot of financial metrics pulled from these documents. Um, so here you can see kind of a similar view of giving us the sub-questions, the sub-answers, and then the synthesized overall response. Um, so those are those are the sort of product features that we have in, in place at the moment. All right. Now that we've gone over the product features, uh, we can start going to some more of the technical details, uh, starting with the high-level system design architecture. Uh, this diagram has a lot of arrows, a lot of different components, but I think we can try to demystify it by going through it section by section, uh, starting mainly with the sort of back-end heavy components. Um, we can see that we're actually using render.com uh, for hosting most of our back-end. Um, it's similar to AWS, but a lot easier to use in some ways. Um, the main component inside of our backend is the fast API backend service. So this is sort of a traditional like load balanced uh, 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 load balanced API service where you have a load balancer that's uh, load balancing requests to a set of uh, worker instances. Um, and uh, this is all set up for you with the infrastructure as code uh, template that's in the uh, repo under render.yaml. Um, that has everything set up for you, uh, including the Postgres database and the cron job service. Um, and also also has auto scaling set up for you right, right off the bat uh, for this fast API backend. Um, this obviously connects to your database, which is the Postgres 15 database. And it also connects to uh, a private uh, S3 bucket, uh, which is hosted on AWS. Um, this is a portion of the infrastructure that you would have to set up yourself. Uh, fairly easy to set up uh, S3 buckets uh, with you know basic public and private settings. Um, but this storage context bucket is where you'd store some of the metadata that's otherwise kind of stored uh, through the storage context uh, from the Llama index library. Um, and obviously, we also have a Next.js front end that's hosted on Vercel, actually, that, that interacts with the Fast API backend as well for some of those uh, chat endpoints. Um, I also mentioned there's a, quite a few services that uh, our backend integrates with. So, namely OpenAI, we uh, are using OpenAI, OpenAI for their you know chat completion endpoints. Uh, the cron job service actually main is actually the main worker that calls OpenAI's embedding APIs to get the embeddings for the for the given SCC uh, documents, and actually pulls those SCC, do SCC documents from the SEC's Edgar API, uh, which which is where uh, SEC exposes uh, many of their uh, the, PDF, the, the filings PDFs from. Um, this cron job can run you know at whatever schedule that you set in that render.yaml, um, but it will pull those API pull those uh, SEC PDFs, store them into this public PDF bucket, um, run the embed run the embeddings through them and store those embeddings inside of the Postgres database since we're using the PG vectors vec PG vector vector store integration, and it'll also update the storage context to update the uh, metadata on what documents are available and such. Um, and then I also mentioned in the uh, product walkthrough that we're also integrating with 
uh, polygon for some of the quantitative inf quantitative questions to answer any uh, questions like what, what revenue, what was the revenue for during this time, etc. All the information is available pretty cleanly from uh, Polygon's API and also provides a nice example of how you can incorporate API-based tools into your uh, chat agent, um, or rather data agent rather. Um, and also lastly, once you're ready to actually go into production, you might actually want some production level monitoring, which is where Sentry.io comes in, which is a uh, monitoring service. Uh, this is great for uh, getting getting pinged whenever you, there's an error on your backend service or a certain threshold of errors. Um, and you can also do like performance monitoring, so you can kind of see like what parts of the code are are uh, taking up the most time in your service. And that's sort of the architecture in a nutshell. Uh, again, all this is open sourced and also all, all mostly uh, defined through infrastructure as code templates. So it should be uh, pretty straightforward to actually deploy this uh, into your own render or ADBS or Vercel accounts. All right, now that we've walked through the product features and the high level system design uh, through that architecture diagram, we can dive into a little bit about uh, how to set up the development environment and we can kind of walk through the setup process there. Um, so what you'll see in the readme is that we recommend that you actually use uh, Get the GitHub code space that we have configured through the dev container.json file. Uh, so what this is is that it basically gives you a um, pre-configured template for spinning up a container that contains a lot of the operating system level dependencies that this project will need to set up. So you can see there's things in here for uh, Python's Poetry Package, SQLite, Docker, AWS, etc. So these are all going to be really useful in getting our local environment set up. So to use that, you'd actually just go to this code button. And if you haven't used code spaces before, you just go to that code button, click the code spaces tab, and you'd click uh, this plus icon to create the code space. And the initial build for the code space will take some time. But after that, you'll have that code space cached. Um, and you'll see I already have one running over here. Uh, and I can actually open this in my own browser uh, by just clicking open, open in browser. And that's probably the fastest way to um, to open up a dev environment here. And uh, what you'll see in this in this portion is that we uh, we have done some initial setup here, but I've still walked through some of the steps that you would take um, if you were to set this up for the first time. Uh, I would probably start by setting up the front end since that's the simplest uh, thing to set up. So you just go into your front end folder. Let me clear that up. So um, you can see this is a pretty basic uh, Next.js template app, template based application. Uh, so you'd, we're just using NPM here for the package management. Um, first up would be just running NPM install. Um, I've already done that. So this step shouldn't take very long for me. Um, once you've done that, you uh, should actually you actually need to uh, source the .m.example folder uh, and base, to basically load in the environment variables that are present in here. Um, there's this next public backend URL environment variable, and this basically tells you uh, tells tells the front end the URL at which our backend server is hosted at. And obviously, if we're running locally, this is going to be hosted at localhost 8000. But you would change this uh, to point to your actual um, hosted services URL once you've started to think about deploying this. So to do that, just do set.a and then source the .m.example file. And then once you've done that, you can do npm run dev. And you'd see that this starts running the application at localhost 3000 over here. And uh, it, it does do poor forwarding if you're running this on VS Code, but from here it'll actually you'll just see that um, this local version of your uh, front end is being served from uh, GitHub's Code Spaces platform. Um, one other nice thing here is that it also comes with live reload. I can show that real quick. We just go to the source folder. Uh, we can go to Pages, 
And let's, let's see, let's see what we can edit here. Let's uh, let's actually just go and edit something in the title and drop down component. So let's see, we can edit. We'll say if I want to say, uh, I'll add, add, add like the missing detail here and say that these are, we're actually analyzing multifaceted SEC financial documents. As soon as I click save, I should be able to see that uh, this has actually got updated here. Uh, multifaceted SEC financial documents. If I remove that now, we can come back here and see that that got changed. So that works great for uh, the front end now. We have that up and running. Uh, now that we have that running in that tab, we can go to a, another tab, another uh, terminal tab here, and go into the backend repository and start, start sorry, backend folder, and start setting that up within this monorepo. So this is a uh, fast API based Python application. Um, a lot of this, the, the code structure for this application was based off of uh, the, the existing templates that fast API offers for their, uh, like their, their own application templates. Um, what we can go to here is uh, going into the readmes for for this. We'll just walk through this sort of step by step uh, for setting up your dev workspace. Uh, first up here is pyenv uh, to install pyenv. I actually already have pyenv installed, so we uh, don't need to worry about that. There's just a really simple curl command you can do to install it. Uh, after you've done that, you also probably want to make sure that you're using the Python version that's inside of the .python version uh, file. So that's 3.11.3, so you just do, I have installed 3.11.3. Uh, you can see um, I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna try to reinstall it. And then you do pym shell, shell to actually start uh, using 3.11.3 in, um, in your terminal. Uh, then once you've done that, you can also do this install Docker step, but if you've used uh, that GitHub Codespaces dev container configuration, you can skip this step. This is already installed. Docker is already installed on your con dev container. Then you can do poetry shell. And this will basically spin up the Python virtual environment inside of your local shell now. And you can see it says Llama app backend uh, as a indication that the shell the virtual environment has been activated. And um, once you've done that now, you actually want to, let's, let's actually open up the backend portion of this code base. Uh, you actually want to create this .env file over here. You can see I don't have any sensitive API keys in here just yet, <laughs> but uh, what you would actually want to do is just, I would start off by just copying the template that we have in .env.development into the .env. And then similar to the front repo, we just want to source this to load in all those environment variables. So now that we have our environment, the environment variables we need uh, set up for this, uh, we can simply start the service with Docker Compose up. And uh, this will spin up all the containers um, locally inside of this dev container that you have from GitHub code spaces. One, thing to know is that, yeah, the first time that you run that command, these containers are going to take some time to load. But after that, uh, you can uh, so you can you can basically use the, your previously ca previously built version of those containers, and it'll be pretty fast to, to use Docker Compose up. Um, we can actually instead run it with make run. But before we even do that, we can we actually want to uh, run the database migration. So to do that, we have a make file, uh, make file command here called make migrate. So that'll spin up the, the database container and then run your Alembic migrations against it. Alembic is the tool that we're using to manage the database uh, migrations from SQL Alchemy, um, which is our ORM. So now you can see like those uh, migrations were applied uh, already previously. Um, for you, it might just take a few seconds longer to actually apply them for the first time. Um, now that we've done that, we can actually run make run. So this is the command that will actually run things in the proper sequence where you will um, 
start the database and the local stack uh, Docker container, and then then run the uh, application server, the fast API server on your on your operating system. And a quick note about local stack: um, if we go back to that uh, diagram where we had um, where we had our, our AWS S3 services. Local stack base is really useful here because it actually allows us to spin up what is essentially a local version of AWS and specifically AWS S3 on your own local machine. It has the same same sort of API interface that the Python Boto 3 library expects when it's interacting with AWS S3. So this allows us to have a really high fidelity sort of AWS-like environment set up locally where you have these buckets defined uh, locally, you can upload documents to them, download documents from them, and uh, it'll be pretty much like you have these S3 buckets created in the cloud, but they're actually just local. Yeah. Um, so you can see we have this set up over here. We also have um, our our front end running, or sorry, our front end running on localhost 3000. We can just kind of see that um, this is all set up properly. Uh, if we go to localhost Sorry, if we go to actually this URL, but replace 3000 with 8000. Yeah, we can see that this is like the default index endpoint, but if you go to APIs to docs, for example, that's the uh, that's sort of like the fast API provided um, open API spec. So this lists out all the endpoints. And we can actually play around with this a little bit here too, why not? Uh, we can see what documents are loaded in here so far. And what you should see is that there are no documents loaded yet. Um, if we see, yeah, documents not found. So that's because our documents table is empty. Okay, so now for our last section here. Uh, now that we've gone over the product overview, we've gone uh, do it on detail on both the system architecture as well as setting up your development environment you might now start getting to wonder how you can start using your own custom documents and start using that within this uh, RAG application. And um, luckily we have some, some nice tools and scripts uh, in the code base to allow you to do just that. Um, so here I have uh, I have the, the code base set up in VS Code this time, uh, still using the, the, the uh, GitHub code space, but connected to my uh, IDE here. Um, we're in the backend repo, and we can uh, start start using this script that I have for upsert document. But before that, let me show you uh, we have the um, we have the the backend repo running over here. Uh, we can kind of show like what's in the what's in the the service right now. And there's only one document that we've loaded so far into the service. Uh, it's the uh, attention is all you need paper. Uh, but we also want to uh, insert this new PDF on scaling laws. So these are not SCC documents at all, but the way that we're storing these documents in our backend makes it, it makes our backend fairly generic and flexible enough to handle these uh, a variety of different types of, of PDF documents. Um, so like I said, uh, we already have the attention is all you need paper. We're going to add the scaling laws paper from OpenAI and see if we can start answering questions about that instead. Um, so the first thing I'll need is the URL to that to the PDF for this paper. Then we'll go back here. Uh, we'll go to our uh, shell and we'll run the uh, upsert document uh, script, which is in the backend folders scripts folder. So do upsert do uh, document. Paste in the URL for that and hit run. Great. So now we have upsert. We have upsert of this document, um, and it's given printed out the ID, uh, the database ID for that document. If we go back to the API and refresh, we can see that uh, we have the, uh, the document showing up in that API response now as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy this ID to clipboard. I'm going to run make chat. So with this, uh, we have a sort of chat a REPL based chat interface in addition to the front end. Uh, this is because the front end is very like SEC document use case specific, but uh, with this chat REPL, we were able to provide a sort of like chat experience, which isn't as SEC specific. Um, so the first step 
to to starting a chat in the REPL, similar to in the in the front end uh, GUI experience, is to select a set of docu documents that you want it to uh, incorporate into your conversation. So the first um, thing is is run pick docs, and um, you can run help at any point to see what commands are available to you. And we can select the do a document by ID. So here I'm just going to do select ID and then paste in the document ID that was printed out here uh, previously. So we're going to hit run. We've selected that document. Finish document picking. And now we can um, do help again and see what commands are available. Uh, we can do create to start uh, to create a new chat, essentially. Uh, hit create. And then we can also run detail uh, to see kind of like what is the structure of this document. So far, we have a um, you know pretty much an empty messages array, and the documents array is populated with one document, which is the uh, the uh, scaling laws paper. So now from here we can start messaging, uh, start start sending messages uh, within this chat, similar to how you would do it uh, in that in the full fledged uh, GUI experience. So we can ask a pretty basic basic question from the paper: what what were the three scaling factors that were tested? Now, I want to switch over here. We have the backend running in a, in a different terminal. And what we can see in here is that since this document has never been loaded before, it actually is yet to have been indexed. But so that's the first step towards this is actually loading in the PDF document, running text splitters, running embeddings. And that's actually what you're seeing being streamed in all of these intermediate messages is all is uh, all those like intermediate steps that are being taken. But the, at the end of that, once you run all the embeddings, we get a output saying final message that says the three scaling factors that were tested include number of model parameters, size of the data set, and amount of compute used for training. So that's 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 the correct answer based on the based on the content of the paper. Um, so hopefully that's helpful in terms of uh, letting you make use of this this chat code base uh, for a variety of different document types beyond just SCC documents. You can extend this to just a variety of use cases. Obviously, there's more components on the front end you might want to change uh, depending on your use case, but the back end at, the, at its core, as you can see here, is pretty flexible to uh, just about any, any kind of PDF document that you want to be using. Um, so with that being our um, with that being our final section, uh, so I just want to wrap it up by saying thank you for watching. I hope that this was useful. Uh, I hope that, I really, really hope that uh, this code base uh, provides a lot of value to the development community in terms of uh, just the, the just a whole slew of minor details that we had to figure out along the way to uh, get it to be production ready. And we hope that it really gives you a leg up uh, when you're starting to build your uh, full stack rag applications uh, off of Llama Index. Um, just a quick shout out to follow us on Twitter, the Twitter and, and to uh, to uh, check out our GitHub repo if you haven't already. And of course, like and subscribe if you like this video. And uh, we'll definitely be, put, be wanting to put out more content just like this. If you have questions or comments or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments here or uh, raise issues on our GitHub page as well. Uh, thank you.